So let's just get started. So talking about chat GPT, obviously it's a big thing happening um, in every space right now. It's kind of affecting everything, uh, pretty much any business that you could think of, um, but specifically talking about it as it relates to coding, and, you know, because chat GPT, you know, and if I say anything that's, you know, a little bit off base, please step in at any point, be hard, but chat GPT is basically an artificial intelligence platform, which is like kind of an overarching category of different things like machine learning, deep learning, all the good stuff, right? And so essentially the chat, G chat GPT is, is essentially just like I said, an AI platform that, you know, for example, if I ask it to go write me a blog about, you know, trading, for example, yeah. it would go out and likely kind of like scrub the web for different blogs about trading, you know, and kind of look at different patterns, pick up those patterns and try to, you know, spit something out to you that would make sense based on the patterns that I learned through the internet. Right. Um, and I think that's kind of where I think about it in terms of the overarching question that I think we want to talk about as it relates to today and really just chat GPT in general is how is it going to kind of affect things going forward? You know what I mean? Like kind of what jobs might it quote unquote take away, if any, and kind of what jobs do you think like maybe it'll just enhance? So obviously a big one um, between the two of us is Daniel, you know, has been learning to code or he, you know, um, <laughs> He graduated with a degree in software engineering, so he knows how to code. He's been learning to code for a few years now, and I've been learning to code now for about six months to a year. So, you know, just kind of understanding that, you know, do we think that ChatGPT is going to remove the need for coders? I have my own opinions on it, but Daniel, you could, you know, maybe give your first take on it. Um, I, I mean, just to answer your question pretty, like, simply, no, it's not going to, like, Take away the, the need for coders. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's still not at the stage. Even even in this beta stage that it's in right now, it's not. It only has data up until twenty the end of twenty twenty one. So it's still pretty lagging in the information that it has. But it's still not going to be able to build a complete application from start to, to start to finish. Like it it just can't do. You can't just say, hey, build me an app that you can use. For, build me a marketplace where. Sellers can sell whatever they want, and then buyers can, can search the web. And they, you can't build like a complex application like that. It can build functions, it can build classes, it can build objects, and it can it can be. It, I think it'll just be used as a way for coders to really speed up their processes, like doing doing very simple, repetitive tasks that they know how to code, or maybe maybe it's like just above their level of. Of skill, right? Let's say, like for you and I, um, we're learning right now about um, neural networks and machine learning and like deep learning and all that stuff. It at first it was just above our level of skill to be able to code a neural network. You know what I mean? Obviously, after we both taken a course and we're we're actively using the technology, so we're much better at it now. But let's say we hadn't learned about it, you can just say, hey, code me a neural network that does X, and then it can do that. And then what you can do as somebody who is just under that level of skill, you can right. actually go through the code and see what it's actually doing. And then you can understand what it's doing and then you might have just learned how a neural network works. What And the, and the thing I love about ChatGPT is it does a really good job of explaining the code. So it'll go into like a whole paragraph of what it's going to do, then it'll do it. And then inside of the code itself, they, it's really good about commenting, hey, this line does this, this line does this. This is the loss function, and the loss function defines. You know what I mean? It's very good about explaining its processes and what's actually going, what it's actually coding. So, yeah. again, to answer your question, no, it's not going to replace the need for coders. It's just gonna, just gonna be an assistant, a digital assistant, basically a coding assistant that helps coders code faster and code much more robust systems and much more complex systems. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's like two points to that that I think were pretty poignant as well because especially as it relates to like using it from neural networks and that's exactly how I felt as well. You know, I understood, you know, from a, a you know, surface level, like here's what you do in Python. Like, for example, we've taken that course on neural networks or, you know, all this kind of stuff and they're typing out, oh, this, you know, I'm going to index this. And like, I understand that part of it, right? But like, like you were saying, that idea of building a network myself was just above my level of understanding, you know, before I like took the course and did that kind of stuff myself. But even when I asked it to do it, you know what I mean? It was still like, and this is why I think, because I, I sent you like kind of this text and I was talking about it in terms of this idea of this perfect, I think you would say like saying that I heard about, you know, ChatGPT specifically. 
And somebody said, chat GPT is going to replace coders the way that calculators replace mathematicians. Like, obviously, calculators didn't replace mathematicians. We also have to learn how to do math. But at the end of the day, like you were saying, you need to, if you know how to use, if you know how to code yourself, you can use chat GPT. But at the same time, just because you, I go, like you were saying, just because I go into chat GPT and say, build me a neural network. It doesn't mean that ChatGPT's robust definition is going to make sense to somebody who knows nothing about coding. You know, yeah. like I had to understand what ChatGPT was trying to do. Like oh, I was doing this, I was indexing this, blah, 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 this kind of stuff. And I have to understand what these words are talking about. And on top of that, exactly like you said, I actually wanted to test out because and I think this is, you know, kind of people just doing those nice clickbaity titles, right? Where it's like, I use ChatGPT to build a 2000% win strategy, yada, yada. And I would literally went into chat GPT and I said, build me a trading. And I told it exactly what I wanted to do in terms of building a strategy that trades futures. Like I was very descriptive in terms of how I wanted it to trade. And like you said, it still could not build it from start to finish because it was like, there's data that I need that I do not have. You know what I mean? There's certain things that I need to get that I, I can't get without you telling me how to get it. You know? Yeah, so it's like, it, it also, because it, because it's lagging at the moment, like it's not perfect. It only has data up until the end of 2021. The thing about, the, the software space is that it changes so quickly that like, for example, Python, uh, Python has changed from the end of 2021 until now, you know what I mean? So anything that ChatGPT will code, there's likely going to be errors, syntax errors, right. coded it wrong. It's going to have functions in there that are deprecated that are no longer used. Like right. you're, you will need to go in and fix all of the problems in it. Cause right. I, I couldn't, unless it's a very simple thing that you're asking me to code, not one time, not one time that I've used it. Have I just, have I gotten the code, ran it and it worked exactly as expected, you know right. what I mean? So that it can't, it, it's not there yet. It might be in the future, but as of, as of today, it's not, it's not there. Yet. But see, and, and that's the, that's the point that, again, I think it makes it more sense, makes more sense in terms of this idea of it's not going to replace coders because how is chat, G, chat GPT going to learn these things? Yeah. By humans, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's because, and I think that's that's something that people kind of get misconstrued when it comes to, and it, I'm definitely, I was definitely, uh, you know, guilty of this myself before I got really into the idea of like machine learning and like building them myself. Like, I really believe that, you know, it was kind of like a big bang type thing. You know what I mean? In terms of like, you give it a genesis and then it never needs you again to like learn. But that's not the case for at least most neural networks. Like you have to try to, understand how the network works and obviously the network the whole point of it is for it to be able to learn without you but like if you know how to tweak certain parameters or certain things you can make it learn faster you know all this kind of stuff better you know learn different things you know and it's there's always going to be a need for people to come in and basically like the way i'm thinking about it quote unquote update chat gpt you know what i mean because even though chat gpt is going to be able to update itself when it's like you keep saying it's going to be able to like you know, in the future, access probably larger banks of data, like go back, you know, in time longer, you know, farther back on the internet to get more data, right? So it's going to be able to learn better as it gets better and like people build it out. But like, again, like I just said, people build it out, right? People who have a like deep understanding of neural networks and all this kind of stuff. Because again, another thing that I was guilty of myself, and I think it's another thing that people, a lot of people are guilty of, we're not really in the space there's this understanding or belief that machine learning, you know, artificial intelligence is a very new thing. Like machine learning, as we know it now, is really just, it's been around since like the 90s. You know what I mean? Like people have just been improving on it, like making it more robust, building it more, you know, more, building out better in code and all this kind of stuff. And like, you see different things where, for example, like Google with TensorFlow releasing TensorFlow and like, you know, you got PyTorch and like just different ways to build machine learning stuff. Like it's just been growing and it's kind of hitting a boom cycle right now. And like people are starting to pick up on it. But again, it's still so nascent that it's probably going to need that kind of quote unquote human update, at least for the foreseeable future. Interesting that you say that because um, actually yesterday I was listening to um, one of the, the panels that they had at the World Economic Forum about AI. And one of the examples that um, one of the panelists used, I forget uh, who it was, but he was saying that um, electricity when it came out, I forget, I forget exactly when electricity was, um, exactly when it was like invented, but from the time electricity was invented, it's not like they immediately started using it. You know right. what I mean? It took time from the inception of electricity for people to re like, for people to actually be able to start using it in their business because 
first they had to they had to restructure their buildings so that their buildings would have electricity and then they would be able to use different things that required electricity like it took about 30 years before electricity was like ingrained in every single business because they had it required so much restructuring of not just like people's jobs but like the organization as a whole you know what i mean and and it's the same with machine learning it, it's been around since like the 80s or the 90s the concept of machine learning and having neural network maybe i'm not sure if neural networks and stuff were originally part of it but just m machine learning as a concept in general has been around since like the 80s or the 90s but it's just now roughly 30 35 years later that you know it's starting to make a big boom in in the in the jobs in the jobs market and stuff like that so yeah. it's interesting that you bring that up and kind of exactly like you said it, it kind of came off the back of like i was saying before you know companies like google you know building this stuff out for their business you know what i mean like and i'm sure that there were google engineers like when they first got started building google out that knew about the idea of machine learning you know what i mean but it just at least for the time at that time you know what i mean they were likely trying to build the algorithm without it you know without machine learning because the algorithm they weren't it, it it just wasn't a business need you know what i mean at that point like i would assume i'm obviously i don't know i wasn't at google at that point so they could have very well been using machine learning in a very nascent or like new form but even if they were you know what i mean it's not like we like i was saying before like like we know it now it's i'm sure they didn't have like tensorflow type shit at google like when they first started you know what i mean i'm sure that's a very like newer thing at google you know what i mean where because it was just newly released from Google in terms of making it open source. But we don't know what TensorFlow is. It's essentially like a machine learning language that Google built in-house for their like algorithm stuff like that. And they kind of made it open source, um, which is a pretty common thing to do. But yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that in terms of like businesses kind of waiting to adopt it. Because that's another thing that I've heard a lot of people who are like very well versed in chat GPT talking about in terms of saying it's going to take time for people to learn. Like, let's just stick with it as the example of coders. It's going to take time even for somebody like Google to learn where should we use chat GPT. And then once they learn where we should use it, that's when they're going to start updating people's job functions to like, you know, use chat GPT. Right. They also have to, they also have to train the, the, the people right. to use chat GPT in, the, in the way that they want. If, and that's the other thing I think as well, like because it's AI and you can just, you just see people just go in and type shit down. People don't realize that there is like an effective and like not effective way to do shit. You know what I mean? And like you have to be very good with the syntax with Chat GPT to get quote unquote exactly what you want. You know? Yeah. I, I was hearing a lot during the World Economic Forum that a lot of a, a new term that you're probably gonna hear a lot is called prompt engineering. Like that's gonna mm -hmm. be like the new the new job title where people are specifically trained to know the exact keywords, the syntax, how you ask Chat GPT a question. To get the most effective answer right. like if i just say yo build me build me a a function that does this versus build me a function that has this that takes these as parameters exactly that, that returns this that you know what i mean that that will have this level of complexity or whatever right the, you will get back vastly different results depending on how you how you ask the question so like a job like prompt engineering it sounds stupid but your whole job would be knowing exactly how to ask the question and that and see it's funny that you bring that up the knowing how to ask the question part right because if i think and it's going to seem a little bit out of left field but i'm going to bring it back around if i think about my nine to five job right the job i have now i'm an implementation consultant with software right so like people buy this business software and i help them implement it into their current you know daily business processes and that kind of shit. but i actually just got moved to a different role where essentially I'm working more with the project managers and like, you know, and that kind of shit. And my whole job is asking the right questions. You know what I mean? But I had to spend two years doing my other role to learn the type of questions I should be asking, you know? And like the person who was like hiring me for that, you know, the new role, that's exactly what he was telling me in terms of, we have a lot of people on our team who, you know, were formerly like functional consultants is what we call ourselves. Like people were actually like in the stuff, like implementing it. And, you know, they moved over because they know how to ask those questions. And it's very much the same thing with ChatGPT, because if we take it back to machine learning with ChatGPT, if I know to tell it, hey, I want a linear, I want a linear regression model neural network. I want to use NN.linear. I want to use ReLU. I want to use, you know, this shape and all this kind of stuff. It's going to be really easy for it to give me exactly, like you're saying, exactly what I need. But if I do it the way that I did it before and I said, just build me a neural network that, you know, that works on, just build me a linear, I said, build me a linear regression neural network, or I think is what I said, or something like that. And it just, you know, gave me that basic ass, 
you know, in and dot linear, yada, yada, all this kind of stuff, try to copy and paste it. Of course it doesn't work. Right. Like there's more, you got to build out the shape's not right. The size isn't right. All this kind of stuff. Right. Or it works, but it doesn't work the way that you expected it to right. because you had other expectations in your brain that you didn't convey right. properly. You know what right. I mean? And it also, um, this whole topic kind of reminds me of, there's like a famous, I don't know if it's an example or like a, like a, like an, a story or whatever, but where, um, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, but essentially there's like a, there's some, there's some business that requires, that has, that has an issue that is like really niche and they don't know how to figure it out. Right. And they, they hire this guy who's been in the industry for like 20 years. He comes in, he sees the problem and he fixes it in like 20 minutes. And, and he's demanding like a, a large, um, a large payment for, for fixing the problem. And they're just like, but you were here for 20 minutes. And he was like, well, you're not paying me for the time that I spent to figure the problem. You're paying me for the 20 years that it took for me to understand how to fix the problem. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's the, it's, it's that type of thing. You're the, the importance comes not in how long it took you to get the result, but the, the time it took you or the, the experience that was required for you to learn how to ask the question so that you could get the result. If that makes sense. And I think in that sense, I think chat GPT is really just going to be more of a help than like, I think a quote unquote threat to jobs uh, in like, there might be certain jobs that are phased out. Right. Um, people keep talking about how like, you know, this white collar job going to be phased out, yada, yada. And it's like, maybe, but there's jobs that are phased out in whenever economy of an economy evolves. That's, that's I also, I, I'm a firm believer in every time that yeah, there are going to be jobs that are phased out, but when jobs are phased out, other jobs are created. And that's right? my point, right? Like, yeah. yeah, it's like, I think phased out is always like a bad term because if you, if you just think about it with the idea of like industrialism to where America is now, right? We didn't just stop having people work. It's just, we just started having it to the point where people can just use their brain. You know what I mean? Yes, they were using their brain to do repetitive tasks now, but now we're automating out those repetitive tasks. So now they can just analyze said repetitive tasks and again, just use their brain more, right? Like it's the same type of thing where it's like, I don't want a coal miner to stop having a quote unquote blue collar job. I would just prefer him to go maybe, I don't, I don't know if I prefer him to mine lithium because that might be dangerous, but like, you know, be more involved in the economy of like, you know, the quote unquote, electric economy or the renewables economy, however you want to think about it, right? Because I think the electric vehicle economy is a whole different thing that we need to get into, but that's just a whole different story for a different day. But like upskilling jobs, you know what I mean? Not taking jobs away, but upskilling them. It's the same thing, again, getting going back to my nine to five, because a lot of the, a, a lot of the point of the software is to automate out repetitive tasks that you don't need to do every day. Like you need to do every day, but it's a waste of your time to do it every day. Like a, the perfect example that I implement a lot is like the bank reconciliation task, which is essentially, again, like business money comes into business, money goes out. And a lot of businesses every single day, they try to recon, reconcile the, you know, the money that came in and out of their bank account just to make sure they're on a good footing going into the next day, yada, yada, all this kind of stuff. And a lot of businesses, that's a manual process, right? But with our software, you can automate it, right? And so because of that, these people can now spend more time saying, okay, well, here are the things on the bank statement. Why are these things coming in? Or here are the things in this other area of my job, yada, yada. They can analyze their job more. And like, that's the thing that we always try to get across to people. This isn't coming in to take away your job. It's coming in to make your job easier so you can actually just be a smart person. You don't have to be a robot who types in the same thing every single Wednesday and it's really repetitive, but you can just be what they hired you for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being your intelligence. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because at my job, um, I'm a cloud engineer at Oracle, and one of our big products is an autonomous database. So basically, the database it it will scale by itself, by scale by itself, it'll update by itself, and it'll do a lot of the mundane tasks right. that like a database administrator would have to do. But it it does it automatically, right? And a big question that we get um, oftentimes is like, well, will this replace the need for a database administrator. Well, like, no, it doesn't because you still need a physical person to monitor the stuff right. going on, why, why it's doing it now, why, like, what, what type of view is, is like, why did it scale upwards? Because maybe because demand scaled upwards and we needed more, whatever, right? You still need somebody to analyze 
the data and analyze what's going on. So it's just really making their job easier. It's not replacing their job in any way. It's just making their job much easier by, by taking out all the mundane tasks that they would have to do. Yeah. It's a kind of like wrap it all up with chat GPT. I think, you know, especially as it relates to coding, I think it's really just one of those things where, especially if you're someone like me and you're just getting started and you have, you know, like Daniel was saying, like a certain level of understanding, but maybe you're trying to learn something that's just above your level of understanding. I think one of the best ways to do that, and this is something that I've seen, you know, learning how to code myself, is go out, do it, not understand what the fuck is going on, go read back up about what's going on, because pretty much everything, and especially this is why ChatGPT is able to do what it's able to do. There's so much, you know, documentation on anything that you're going to learn from the coding space that you can go out and read about it, you know what I mean? And as well, that's why ChatGPT is so good about giving you an explanation about what it's doing, you know what I mean? So it's like you can go out, try to code it, see what's wrong, go ask ChatGPT, hey, can you code this for me? See the explanations, all this kind of stuff, right? And it's just an easier way for you to kind of like piecemeal your learning and just kind of go back and forth, you know, do, go back, read, do, go back, read, all this kind of stuff. And it's, again, like it's a little bit better than like I was saying before, like maybe the way I used to do it getting on YouTube, watching a course, trying to do it along with the course, right? All that kind of stuff, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, also, one, one last thing I would say um, for you, I don't know if you've done this yet, but one thing that I've done a couple of times is like, let's say I, I get the code from ChatGPT, I run it and it doesn't work. I will put in the error to ChatGPT, hey, I'm getting this error. And then it'll try to explain what the error is. Cause like usually wow. you get an error, you'll just Google it. Yeah. And, go to like, and somebody's like, this is what you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody explaining it. Right. But like sometimes chat, I mean, sometimes chat GPT has no idea what the answer is. But like sometimes if you put it in, it's like, hey, it might be this because you're you're passing in the wrong data type and wow. it's trying to do this. Yeah. Like, you know, like, it'll explain what the error means. So yeah, that's huge. Think, yeah, that's right huge. Now. Yeah. I, I didn't even think about that. So I appreciate that call out. But yeah, I mean, just want to have like a general discussion about chat GPT as well. You know, obviously, you know, it's going to have an effect on a lot of different spaces, you know, trading, coding, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, just wanted to talk about it in terms of how we think it might, you know, affect things and how we're using it ourselves. So 